This video is part of my collaborative classroom lecture series in which I'm talking about why I, I added this component to my uh, flipped blended master classroom design. And uh, in another video, I actually talked about the, the idea of ki or kids uh, having a space to blog about their thoughts and so that they can actually reflect on what's happening in the classroom. We've also talked about adding... Um, uh, kids can comment on those blogs and also participate in that way. And um, then other kid, the kids will then feel that they actually have a role in the, in in, the, in their being heard on these reflections, and they see that their product actually has an outcome. Uh, we also talked about creating a, an encyclopedia together with your students, and it's something called a wiki space, and where throughout the year the students end up building an encyclopedia of knowledge that they work on together to create. They can create links for the resources. They can create links for videos within the, these articles. They can create um, actual descriptions within the articles. And they, so they can pull the resources and help each other learn on, on, on through that uh, student-created encyclopedia environment. And now the other part of this is the actual discussion part uh, on the discussion group. And what can you do with that that actually enhances the, the classroom environment uh, or the learning experience for kids. Now, there's a lot of things you can do. You can create questions which force the kids to evaluate uh, a, prob a certain situation. So you can, you can pose a question to ask, asking the kids to um, evaluate something that belongs to the material. So for example, you know, uh, do you think that the, the cloning should be performed in order for us to get, to, to, to get uh, uh, more, more organs to solve people who have problems you know, and need to transplants? Or, now, I'll also give our kids an opportunity to problem solve. So you can give them a problem, say, so for example, uh, the, rural the rural population is growing faster than this resor the resources are being uh, depleted really, really fast. How can we solve that problem? And so they can brainstorm and reflect and debate and actually try to solve these problems. And so these are great ways to actually create the scores in the classroom tied in to whatever topic you're doing. Um, you can also do interpretive subjective questioning in which the kids uh, have the opportunity to, to uh, say what, what, what ifs, what would happen, and synthesize new information based on the material they're learning in class. Uh, you can also have debate, which allows kids to practice their persuasive writing and, and uh, where they have to articulate opinions, form thesis statements, provide arguments uh, with uh, a lot of examples and concrete experiences, and doing uh, all of these things in order to support their actual uh, point. And then they actually can uh, counteract other t each other's points and critique each other and have a really good debate about any given topic. You can also uh, use this environment to give a ch students a choice about what kind of assignment they can actually do. And that's really good, too, because uh, it allows you to diversify what kind of assignment kids will be doing. And another one that's really nice is the idea of vote and suggest. You can pose a question to the group and then have kids be like, okay, so please propose an answer for this or propose a solution for this problem or propose an idea or an argument for this. And then at the same time, kids are voting or just like in Facebook, they like whatever they like the most, you know. And so at the same time, points or arguments are collecting likes and at the same time, new arguments are being added. And at the end, you, you decide who, what was the best argument and who got the most likes. And so uh, you can either vote for who was the most liked one uh, or the one you really liked, or you can suggest another idea within the context of that. So you can say, for example, how can we solve the global warming problem? And then so a lot of kids can vote, uh, suggest ideas and say why. And then, or they can vote on, it, on, on other people's ideas and say why they voted for that. And so this, it also allows them for uh, creating a good discussion environment. So there's a lot of types of discussions that you, can, that can, you can do with the online classroom environment that can actually be engaging and have the kids have a good time. Now, in order for students to do this, they can actually create their own discussions. Students can actually uh, start discussions asking for help with a specific topic so they can open their own discussions. Students can also open discussions to do their own group work so each group can meet together to do a uh, can have a discussion just for them so they can do their group work activities. Uh, and then within that, they can actually create uh, things like uh, presentations where they actually uh, research a topic, discuss the topic together, and put the presentation together all within the, uh, the online collaborative environment. And then they present that in class or even leave it just online. And so there's a great way to work together asynchronously like I talked about in the previous video. 
Uh, you can also do web quests within this. You can uh, post a question and a guideline of how kids need to complete that question or a series of websites they have to meet in order to explore that question and then have kids do a reflection on it on the bottom too. So that's another thing you can do with this collaborative environment. Another thing you can do is a reciprocal learning project. In other words, where kids actually work together and in order to create a, a, a project about something and then once you finish your product you present that product to someone else who then criticizes your product meanwhile he, he's doing the same to yours so you, you're both teaching each other within this reciprocal learning system uh, you can also do things like multimedia mashups you can embed multimedia in this in these topics with images and pictures and videos and audio and then use that to actually jumpstart discussions because kids like that technology in, in, into the thing. So another thing you can do is you can create a challenge-based learning topic, you know, where you actually, uh, the teacher um, creates a topic, a major, a broad topic, say so for, so for example, like I said, solve the problem of global, war, global warming. And so the kids have then ha have to create, have to challenge that uh, or create a solution for that. In other words, a hypothesis that can possibly solve the problem. They have to. Uh, they and then they finally put uh, present what they got, and then other kids criticize them. So in other words, the teacher gives a topic. The student picks an aspect of the topic or a problem statement within that topic, researches that, proposes a solution uh, for the problem, and then presents the solution to to the other classrooms, which then criticize their solutions. And so it's kind of like walking through a scientific method within the context of one discussion. And then um, another thing you can do is doing things like, things like reading checks, where at the end of each uh, video lecture series that you put in your flipped classroom, you can put a reading check for kids to they actually have to perform a certain task within a collaborative environment uh, in order to actually prove that they have read the material. And like I said before, you can actually have standardized testing practice where you can actually put post questions and have kids vote for the, for the most likely answer. Um, and there's oh, a bunch of other types of assignments you can put on this. You can put true and false questions. You can, put, you can debate discrepancies between. So you do a lab in class and then you open the online a debate about the results. Uh, you can uh, de debate controversial topics like I said about the global warming and genetic engineering, things like that. You can put practice quizzes and vocabulary exercises in there. You can do. You can say, uh, vote for the best example of this, kind of like the voice suggesting we talked about. You can talk about a topic that's related to the unit, but it's not really part of the, of the unit. And so you can explore uh, extensions all, online too. Uh, you can do. You can post a, a, some sort of exercise that forces the kids. So you did a lab in class, and now the kids work together to analyze, hypothesize, and propose questions for a future pro project and then vote for what, well, whatever was best and then in class we do it and so that way we can actually create together something that we can do in class um, they can also let's say I'm going to do doing a certain lab please let's, let's vote in which one you want and why and then that's the one we end up doing in class you can vote for classroom activities as well you can create uh, let's say for example uh, a, bio a biography video or a multimedia project about someone's in a given scientific field and have kids actually create those and then kid, all the kids will vote for whoever they think was the most influential person or whoever had the best idea for that specific topic they're learning about. So when you're doing cell theory, you can assign virtual, Schwann, Schleiden, um, and then say whichever one did it, what and then who was most, who most important and so forth. Same thing you can do when you're doing DNA research. And I can go on for this. You can also do follow-up questions to in-class dis in discussions or lab activities. And so there's a lot that you can add to your classroom experience by adding this online environment experience. And then as long as your kids have to participate as a part of their grade, uh, you end up getting an actual flow of information into these things. And it's also, also, of course, very important not to try to do too many of these things all at once, but you can vary the activities as you go through the year, and that way you're always not always doing the same thing and you're actually making something this interesting for kids to be using. Um, another another fe feature that's important about this is the idea of peer editing, that kids can actually work to c criticize each other's work and become critical thinkings of critical thinkers that actually analyze each other's information. So for example, the best example of this is something like a science fair project where the kids have to post their hypotheses, their lab reports, their experiments, the directions, the materials, and the analysis. They post everything online. Uh, 
either like a blog or as part of a discussion, and then other kids will then reply to that and criticize the, the, their work. And so that is kind of like what I'm going for there. Now, um, you can also do compare and contrast for terms. For example, you present a term and then have kids uh, brainstorm comparison and contrasting things about it. Uh, you can also debate controversial hit issues and also present uh, pictures, diagrams, videos, and documents within the context of that and then have kids talk about what they watched. And that's kind of how I do my flipped classroom. I post the videos and then have the kids talk about what they learned. And so all of these are ways that you can use it. I mean, a lot of the ways were tied into science because I'm a science teacher, but you can imagine how you can use this in a lot of different ways in your class to enhance the experience the kids are doing in class. And if you are a student or a parent watching this video, you understand what I'm going for because you can then create a diversity of activities and information that you probably couldn't do within the confines of a classroom environment. So here's what you do with the flipped classroom now. You completely erase the need for homework. You delete the homework altogether. Kids don't do practice at home anymore. No worksheets, no projects, none of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you focus on actually having the kids learn at home and do a f actual studying, watching the videos, getting the material through. In class, they have to prove they learn through a quiz and then do actual practical activities which require them to work at higher critical thinking levels with things like lab and teaching and, and uh, practice, work, practice problems especially towards the critical ending of it and also have a, a class discussion that's a critical thinking based class discussion and maybe even have some time for some inquiry and, and content creation. Uh, if a kid is going fast through the topics, they can, he can even use classroom time to participate in the collaborative environment. I have no problem with that. But then you add another layer when you, you create the, the only homework that they actually ever have to do is participate in the collaborative environment where the homework is not a something you can copy. It's pure creation, critical thinking, criticism, debate, cooperative learning, a bunch of things which actually enhances their learning experience. And I cannot say how excited I am about having using this in my class and, and, and hopefully the kids uh, will learn, continue to learn a lot by using this system. So uh, on the next video I'm going to talk about how do you actually create an environment that is going to be safe and productive so that the kids can do this.